Zero Girl, and you're watching Zero Calvin. Bitches! <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? I'm home playing hooky from work on my birthday and was kind of goofing around on the internet, as one does. And I found this interesting software called um, ClipDrop, clipdrop.co. Um, this isn't a advertisement for them as, as far as like, you know, I'm not getting paid for it or, or anything. Um, but I did just find it and I thought I'd share. So they have a few apps, but the most interesting one is this Relight one. And I think you can sign up for free and use up to like a 1K image. But if you want anything bigger than that, you have to like, you know, uh, sign up for like $5 a month or something. Um, or 60 bucks for the year, something like that. So anyway, um, let's play around with it. And I'll show you how it works. It's pretty cool. So let's just take a picture like this. It's not very high res. Um, but we'll just play with it for now. And, um, you know, the lighting is pretty even and boring on it. So what if we wanted to spruce it up a little bit? Let's just drag and drop it over here. And immediately it has this crazy lighting setup, which is kind of just a demonstration. It looks like crap, but it is interesting because you can move lights around and see in real time it changing the lighting in the image, which is pretty cool. I normally immediately delete all three of the point lights, and it leaves me with an ambient light. The ambient light, um, for now, I'm just gonna change to a white, click OK. So the ambient, you'll see, we can go anywhere from dark to super bright. For now, I'm just, we can consider this like a, uh, a fill light. So I'm just going to keep it kind of turned down for now so we can see the results of our point lights. And I'm going to add a point light to it now. Now you can see with the point light, I'm actually changing. We can really kick it up a notch if we wanted to. We can really change how this is lit. Now, if you're wondering how you get like depth information, like if it's in front of or behind the model, there's actually this distance thing. So I thought this was distance as in like absolute distance from the model, but it's actually sort of in or out. So if we go like this, it kind of puts it behind the model. And if we go like this, it puts it way in front of the model. So by playing with it, we can kind of get the lighting we're looking for. So let's bring it in front a little bit more. Now radius is just kind of, it's more like the strength, I think, than anything else. Uh, I mean, it is the radius of this point light in a way, but it's also the kind of strength of it. Although this is also the strength of it. So I don't know. It's kind of a, a weird thing. So you got to have to kind of have to play with uh, all the combinations to get what you want. But if we just wanted this, set the radius pretty big, set this pretty strong, but put the distance back here, we can kind of just get some really cool, like harsh looking shadows going on here spooky underlighting, crazy stuff. And of course, if we wanted this to be like an accent light, we can actually change the color on it to make it some kind of weird thing. So, that in itself is pretty cool, I thought. Because you can really get some interesting effects going on with this. So you gotta wonder, like, how are they doing this? 
And the way they're doing it is somehow with, through the magic of AI and stuff, they're actually generating both a normal map and a depth map from this picture. And they're using the depth map to create these shadows and stuff, which is pretty cool. So I'll show you some neat things we can actually do with that in iClone. So I'm actually gonna delete this point light and I'm just gonna use a white ambient light and I'm just gonna light this and I'm just gonna light this kind of um, kind of average, not something like that. So it's pretty much back to just being, actually, I guess we could just use the original, yeah. So we're pretty much just making it the original. So we could just use the original um, for what I'm gonna do next. But if you did want to change the lighting subtly, you can do it, you know, now. So if you wanted to make, um, the goal here is to make the lighting even and our lighting on the original photograph was even, so that's fine. So I'm just gonna use this. So anyway, let's download the three images. So we're gonna download the result But we can also download a normal map and a depth map. So you can see what those look like. That's a depth map and a normal map, which is all pretty cool, right? But what's really neat is what we can do with it in iClone now. So in iClone, we're gonna do a, f we're going to create a surface, a plane. I'm gonna hold down shift and scroll out to kind of scroll out of this. Now we gotta do some things with the plane to prep it. Um, first of all, we don't want this blue color. So we can just delete it. We're gonna replace it anyway, but we're gonna delete it. You'll wanna make sure that the diffuse color is a solid white. Okay, so we got this lovely thing. Um, we also want to resize it to the same aspect ratio as our image, okay? So the easy way to do that is to right click on the image, go to properties, details. So 426 by 600. So I'm just gonna change the scale to 422 by 60, because it's already a fairly big object. So that'll set the scale for us. And now we can actually do um, reset scale, which will apply it. It should say apply scale, honestly. So now we have it in the correct aspect ratio and we can add textures to it. So in the material thing, we're gonna click on the base color and load in our image, okay? So, so far, so good. We've got the image, big deal. What if we wanted some depth information on this image though? Well, we can fake some depth information by adding a normal map. So click on bump, load the texture, click on the normal map and click OK. Now the normal map uh, format that they give you is OpenGL, I mean uh, DirectX, and we want to flip it to OpenGL. So you want to do flip Y, which makes it correct. So now we can really boost this up and see the effect, but it we have this sort of effect of it um, adding some depth information to it. So we're just going to leave this as 100. So that in itself is kind of cool, but now we can really bump it up to the next level and do displacement. So before we do displacement, we want to um, subdivide this a little bit. Because if we look at the, um, 
the mesh, it's not very intricate, okay? So we want to actually subdivide it. So you can go up here to smoothing, click smoothing on, and bump it up to three levels of subdivision. So that'll make it look like that instead, which will help us with our um, displacement maps because it gives it more points on the mesh to displace. So we're going to go back to, over to the material section, go to displacement, and we're going to load in our height map as a displacement map. map. Click OK, and we're going to say height gray, grayscale. We want to uncheck assign to bump because we're already using a normal map as the bump. Click OK. And we saw a little something happen. Sort of seems like maybe there's some depth going on. We can bump up the strength some more to really see it take effect. Now we're start, starting to see something happen. It's actually got some thickness to it, but not really. So if we go down all the way down here, you'll see under tessellation, um, we shouldn't, since we subdivided it, we shouldn't have to mess with its, the tessellation much. We can just bump it up by one. So Put it on too. But the thing we really want to play with is this multiplier. So we can play with that and actually really get our height information going on. So now we have this really crazy looking 3D effect going on where our photograph has been <laughs> switched over to 3D, which is really pretty cool. And we can play around with, um, you know, the different settings. Uh, we can turn our normal map off if we want. And we have just this height map. It doesn't look quite as dramatic. But anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. Now you can actually do some other cool things with this. Like say, um, you can actually animate this. So let's delete our base color. Now we're just gonna go to the diffuse color and give this something. Uh, let's give it a dark blue. Click okay, and we can change our roughness if we want. We can make this a little shinier. Now it looks like a vacuum molded, like a plastic vacuum molded thing. But here's the wild thing. We can, let's turn the multiplier all the way up. Under displacement, we have the strength. Notice it's in green. So anything with green writing in iClone is keyframable. So we can set this at zero, then go say three seconds in, and then set it at 300. And now we could do something cool like watch it emerge from a plane. So that's pretty neat, isn't it? And if you wanted to do some weird combination, actually, I guess we could just, uh, we can delete that. So it's not as interesting without the normal map. If we wanted to add our base color back in, we could do that. See what that looks like. 
change our diffuse back to white. So now we got a regular flat photograph. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> so anyway, that's the goofy things I've been playing around with today on my birthday. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'll see you again in the next video. Cheers.